Hey everyone, the name is Erector and today I want to talk about INFJs and narcissists. And a question I often get is, are INFJs more likely to be attracted to narcissists? Are narcissists more likely to be attracted to INFJs? First, to get something out of the way, a narcissist is a person who cannot show empathy. A person who cannot, even if they would want to, empathize and show care for other people. A narcissist is a person that is struggling with a cognitive dysfunction of sorts. That means even if they know it is right and even if they have been taught it is important, it is difficult for them to entertain and take on the viewpoints of other people. They cannot see other people's viewpoints. They cannot see other people's side of the coin. So a narcissist is a person that can only see their own side of the story, their own logic, their own rationale, their own beliefs, their own viewpoints. They cannot see the viewpoints of other people and so they will dismiss it. They will say it's stupid, they will say it's ignorant, they will say it's retarded. They will use any means to demonstrate the strength of their own side without care or consideration to other people. So why would an INFJ be attracted to this? Often it's been shown that empaths and narcissists occupy opposite ends of the scale. So the thought here is opposites attract. If narcissist is the opposite of empath, if an empath is a person who shows an unusual amount of empathy and a narcissist is a person who shows an unusual lack of empathy then they are two polar ends of the same picture, two polar opposites. And the theory here is opposites attract, but they don't stick together. Opposites attract, but they don't tend to mesh on in the longer perspective. So INFJs have an issue, and this is... Uh, uh, Something I call the problem with pride. You know, all types are prone to pride in themselves, their own innate traits, their own personality traits in a state of flow. We all have some things we know we are better at than other people. Even the most chronically insecure individual will have some activities that they think they are better at than others. Most people believe they have a superpower. And INFJs believe think that empathy is their superpower, perspective, seeing other people's viewpoints, understanding other people's feelings, being able to introspect and evaluate and understand people's intentions, being able to read people's minds, being able to care for and guide and shepherd other people, helping other people get through a difficult situation, providing counsel and advice or support when needed, being loyal and being there for people in times of difficulty. INFJs see themselves as masters of this very trait. The people that can guide and shepherd and help and counsel other people and make other people feel validated on a soul level. So when you look at a narcissist, narcissists tend to op occupy the other end of the spectrum. They tend to occupy the idea that I am the only person who knows the truth. I am the I have seen it, I know it, I know it 100%. They demonstrate absolute certainty. They observe that they know and they have validation and they have solid rationale for everything they do, everything they think, everything they believe. A narcissist is a person that believes they have solid evidence and foundation for every single belief pattern or thought or idea that they express. They, exp they believe that they know it, they're the best, they know everything, they are masters, they are uh, infallible, they believe that they are never going to be making any mistakes, they believe that they are going to be flawless in execution, and they believe that all mistakes that do happen are the results of other people's flaws and other people's issues, not their own. So a person with this kind of self-worth is going to need a lot of empathy and care from other people. A genuine thing is, if I, you know that you are right, if you believe with absolute certainty that everything you do is correct, and that you have solid reasoning for everything you do, then why won't other people see that? Why won't other people understand that? Why are other people constantly getting in your way? Why are other people constantly telling you you are wrong? How can other people say this? What is it that makes them say this? 
I believe this is what initially makes an INFJ an attractive choice, you know, a person that can show and illuminate other people's thought patterns and perspectives and viewpoints. This kind of person can be helpful, this kind of person can be supportive, this person can see my perspective, can see my viewpoint, can understand my rationale. They know why I'm doing what I'm doing, they seem to understand me, they seem to be able to read my thoughts, they seem to be able to know me better than anyone else. So, because they see me and know me, they validate me. That's a general thought pattern in psychology. We all long to be validated, we all long to be appreciated, we all long to be supported. And every person we meet is craving validation, fundamentally on some level. They, are, they want to be seen, they want other people to notice them and what they are doing. They want to be understood for what they are doing. They don't want to be questioned, they don't want to be criticized, they don't want to be forced to explain themselves. They don't want to be uh, misunderstood. They are afraid of being misunderstood. So, a problem with the INFJ's point of pride is this belief that I am the only person who can do these things. I am the only person who can see other people's perspectives. I am the only person who is capable of this immense caring and loyalty. I am the only person. That is the problem of the INFJ, that belief that you are the only person capable, responsible, and socially responsible enough to do what you are doing, to be who you are. The only person capable of having these profound insights, the only person capable of executing these bold visions and ideas, the only person capable of helping and supporting other people in a correct and good manner. The problem with this belief, this pride, <laughs> is it's generally limiting nature in this we are building an image in which every single person we meet is prone to narcissism. Every single person we meet is prone to, uh, is lacking in the ability to see other people's perspective. It's lacking in other people's ability, in, in the ability to listen to and understand others. The more you believe that you are great in your flow functions and in the cognitive functions that are in your dominant state, the more likely you're going to believe that other people are terrible and these very practices. So a general idea is INFJs walk around and struggle with patterns where they feel they have been very loving and very supportive and very loyal and they have been very deeply invested in another person. They've seen, they've understood, they've been there, they've thought about you for a long time, they've been following you along you, your life path and your struggles and in what you've gone through. And they've got nothing back for it. They've been following you for years and they've got nothing back for it. You don't seem to understand them. You don't seem to think the way they do. You don't seem to see their perspective. You don't seem to listen to them. You don't seem to think about them. You don't seem to see their perspective. The general criticism I hear from INFJs is this very thing. You know, I don't feel seen. I don't feel understood. I don't feel listened to. I don't feel I am getting anything out of this relationship. I am starting to feel this is a one-sided relationship. And so I'm starting to feel like I'm dealing with a narcissist. While it might hold in general true that INFJs are more likely to be attracted to a narcissist, because of the contrast in this very experience, because while it is true that narcissists are more likely to be attracted to INFJs, and this is a general pattern, it's also likely that INFJs are turning normal people into narcissists. Because of this position, this problem of pride. A general issue in relationships is we need to be able to let other people in. We need to, need, we need to let other people help us. We need to let other people support us. We need to let other people be a part of our lives. We need to share with other people our mind and our thoughts and perspectives. We need to... Let other people counsel us. We need to let other people support us and be loyal with us and follow us along. We need to let people believe in us. We need to let people in. A problem with INFJs is um, they are private, they are sensitive, 
They crave harmony, they hate conflict, and they are very, very, very independent. So that means states keep a lot of vital perspectives to themselves. They don't share their mind. They don't show people their deeper sensitivities. They are too sensitive to talk about their problems with other people and to let other people in because they are afraid to be hurt. And they are too afraid of voicing concerns and problems in a relationship, causing long-term tensions and struggles in silence. They are independent and they believe I can solve all my problems on my own. Yeah, they believe they can solve all their problems on their own. I don't need anybody. I can deal with it myself. I don't need to tell anybody about this. I can handle it. I don't need to do anything. Ask other people for help. I can do it myself. It makes sense this kind of a person would cause disconnection and conflict with a person that was generally very caring and communicative and affectionate. An INFJ could cause a lot of tension with a person that wanted to talk about it, that wanted to discuss things, that wanted to be honest with you, that wanted to be real with you, that wanted to uh, put their feelings on the table. An INFJ can dismiss a person that is asking for intimacy and connection and a chance to do things together. An, INFJ's, uh, an INFJ might dismiss the thought of collaboration and working together with another person and talking and discussing ideas with other people because of those with long-held beliefs about self, those long-held beliefs that I can do it myself, I don't need other people, I can solve my problems on my own, I can introspect and understand and deal with this situation by myself. And these initial conflicts are less with narcissists. Narcissists aren't going to force you to discuss your feelings with them. They are not going to ask for your honesty. They are not going to ask for you to open up or to share your thoughts or to share of yourself with them. They're not going to ask you this because they're not going to care. And that's very (laughs) easy. Yeah, there's this Relationship is very, very, in the beginning at least, easy. It's so easy to be with such a person because they're not going to force you to be in a position that will make you uncomfortable. And here's the truth, that it makes an INFJ uncomfortable to be vulnerable. It makes an INFJ uncomfortable to be authentic, to be honest with other people. It makes an INFJ uncomfortable to open up and share ideas that they are still thinking about. It makes an INFJ uncomfortable to talk about their feelings and bring things out in the open. To, sh- to let other people show them affection or care. To let other people compliment you or to let other people help you or to let other people discuss your ideas. To lose some of that need for control that an INFJ has. Go. But at the same time, this is an INFJ's most ultimate and dire need. The need to open up and to put your ideas out in the open. The need to explore your ideas and see where they will go. The need to discuss your feelings with other people. The need to have intimacy and connection. The need to talk about your ideas and to work on and change things and put things to practice and try out new ways. The need to be honest and authentic. Those things are hardwired fundamental needs to an INFJ's long-term happiness and well-being. So while it is difficult, it is also fundamental to your happiness and well-being. If you don't do these activities, your life is going to suck. But doing them is difficult. So, 
you are in this moment 22. You are in this moment where you are forced to choose between what is comfortable but is going to suck long term and what is difficult but what is going to be rewarding long term. You're forced to show, choose between whether to invite a narcissist into your life that will uh, give you space and will give you privacy and will give you time by yourself, ultimately making you feel alone, ultimately feeling, making you feel trapped, ultimately making you feel abandoned, ultimately making you feel empty. And you're but choosing between a person that is going to be asking you to be open and vulnerable and to sharing with yourself. And you're going to be forced to, in your current relationships or in your current uh, friendships or fam with your current family members, force yourself to be open and to share things and to let go of some of your need for control. Yeah, ultimately, if you want to be happy, you're going to eventually be forced to discuss your ideas with other people, even though other people might change them or misunderstand them or do them differently than you would. Even though other people might misunderstand you, you're going to have to open up and be honest and show people your perspective and your viewpoint. Even though there's a chance that uh, it's going to go outside of your control and it's going to lead somewhere you didn't anticipate. You're going to have to be open with your ideas and your insight. And you're going to have to try things out. Ultimately, an INFJ who is unable to do these things is going to feel isolated. They're going to feel too sensitive to function. They're going to feel... They're going to feel choked by their own need for harmony. I'm going to leave you with uh, one key thing on the topic of INFJs and narcissists. Be careful that you're not too sure of yourself. Be careful that you're not too sure of your own good. Be careful that you're not too guarded. Be careful that you're not too afraid to be vulnerable. Be careful that you're not making it impossible for other people to love you. That you're not making it difficult for other people to help you. That you're not making it impossible for people to collaborate with you. Let people love you. Let people collaborate with you. Let people discuss things with you. Let people in. And see that they're not as self-involved as you thought they were. They're not as ignorant as you thought they were. They're not as unempathetic as you might have initially assumed. No, these, most people in society are more than capable of empathy, more than capable of seeing your perspective and of understanding, if you give them the chance. Very few people fall in this narcissist definition. A very few percent show this problem of an incapability of empathy. The narcissist uh, trait is overdiagnosed and overused to describe people that are for various reasons unable to show you empathy at the moment. The reason for a lack of empathy can be many things. It can be the result of a temporary personal struggle, it can be temporary self-absorption, or it can be that you are unable to let them in and let them love you. Yeah, it makes sense though, doesn't it? An inability to let people love you. It makes sense that such an inability would lead you to thinking other people can't love you or won't love you. But the very truth is a lot of people out there want to and will love you and do love you. All you have to do is let them in. So these are my thoughts on INFJs and narcissists and I hope this video can help you understand some things about INFJ and love and their biggest struggles, but also their biggest benefits. I hope you will understand that despite our flaws and despite our struggles, we all struggle with pride. You struggle with pride. INFJ struggle with pride. INFJ struggle with vulnerability, but you also struggle with vulnerability. A lack of vulnerability is what kills most relationships. A lack of vulnerability for an INFJ is just as problematic as a lack of vulnerability in an INTP or an ENTJ. So I'm not here to say INFJs are 
bad people. I'm not here to say INFJs are worse than other people. I'm just here to show their side of the picture, their problem, their possibility, their good and their bad. So thanks everyone for watching this video and I hope to see you all in the next one.